I do have a fear of losing viewers because of success. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? I'm afraid I'll be dead. Then do something. Do I choose health or do I choose money? Girl, I, as a person, am nowhere near as bad as hater nation. And I say that with my chest, literally with my chest. I did not create this community at all. It's fat phobia. Once again, your girl has run out of ideas for content and has asked her audience to ask her questions for a video. But let's be real, these are questions she's asked herself. I've condensed the original 31 minute video into the somewhat interesting questions, so let's go. I really try to choose questions that people have been asking a lot of and questions that I haven't really answered before. Does your mom remember how she found out you were gay and can she share her version slash side of the story? So that's actually something that me and my mom have recently talked about. I wonder if Mama Lynn knows Amber's entire coming out story was stolen from Casey. Um, today I'm gonna tell you guys my coming out story. This video is about my coming out story. My mom found out I liked girls because I wrote a, a love note to Lucy. I was writing a letter to my friend about her saying how I do like this girl duh, 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 and I don't know how to tell my mom, I don't know how to tell my parents. And I left it in my pants and she went to do laundry and well... The notes, I guess I never ended up giving it to my friend and I left it in my pants pocket and my mom did my laundry. She found it, so... You can only imagine what happened there. And I, I was trying to lie to her at first. I finally said, yeah, but I did the safe route. At least I believe it was a safe route and I came out as bisexual. I had explained to her that no, I don't just like women, I am bisexual. And I actually have asked her, I was like, mom, do you want to share your side? She said she would, but she doesn't want to like physically be on camera right now. So I think it would just be like her voice or something. But I think that'd be fun to like hear the mother's side to a coming out story. I think a lot of people could actually use that. Have you considered cutting your hair shorter to help it recover? So yes, but not the way that some of you suggest. Some of you are like, go up to here to your shoulder. Never gonna happen. So I cut my own hair and it already feels so much better. So here I am showing you a clip of my hair from my last vlog. And then I'm showing you my hair today where no, it's not perfect, but it just looks and feels so much healthier. I am very glad that I decided to take a pair of kitchen scissors and just chop, 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 chop. ever get discouraged from losing weight because of your diagnosis of a lipedema? Since lipedema is not curable and it cannot go away, yes, I do get discouraged because I know that there is a large portion of my body that will not go away with weight loss. That's hard for me to absorb. I will always have like a disfigured body. I'll never have the body that I want, but I'm also so far past that like vein. Oh, I just want to look better. It's, it's all about health. Wait, so remember when she'd constantly blame her weight gain on lymphedema and lipedema? She'd openly admit that losing weight would help these things, but now, losing weight wouldn't help to improve these things and what she's more worried about is how her body looks aesthetically? The specialist also recommended compression treatments that Amber has yet to follow through with. I, I would have people, oh, you have lymphedema, it's so gross. Really, like, I don't have lymphedema, like, stop being rude. <laughs> I've always, like I'm talking always, have had really big calves. Obviously with the weight gain, my legs just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I just never wanted that to be me because of my weight, because it's like, I ruined my body and that's like my fault. I think this is one of the things that kicked me into high gear with weight loss. And then when I noticed that I just kept like big and I just kept getting more swollen, I noticed that it kept getting bigger. It is what it is, like I did this to myself, I have to lose weight. So with lymphedema, you can't get rid of it. It's not something that goes away. But with excessive weight loss, it can get smaller and it can help drastically. And you can also get surgery, like I did this to myself. But I've already noticed with the weight that I have lost, it's not as like hard feeling. It's not my fault that I have lipedema. Lipedema is not a problem because I'm fat. I do have a little bit of lymphedema, but what I'm actually experiencing is lipedema. I gain weight if I eat 2,400 calories, like no one believed me. A lot of you don't believe me when I say that I do gain weight by eating that amount. And 
there was even a section of a time where I was eating like 1700 calories and I was still gaining weight every single day. No matter what diets you do, no matter how low of calories you gain weight, that is the number one symptom. I'm never going to get rid of this, but what I can do to help it and to lose weight the best of my ability is low carb. She also gave me this like lymphatic massage. It freaking hurt. It hurts so bad, but it's something that she said that I need to try to do daily. Um, it's a lot of massaging near lymph nodes, um, but it's supposed to help move fluid throughout your body so you're not retaining so much fluid. And But I'm not going to these specialists to just hear them tell me to do something and me not doing it. I'm not getting these tests and I'm not seeing these doctors just for them to tell me something and me not listen to them. No, I'm going to better myself. Awkward. What is currently motivating you to lose weight? And it's pretty simple. It's like, I don't want any more health complications due to my weight. And I do not want to die anytime soon. Like I want to live for at least another 40 years. And I know that sounds crazy um, because people my size, we don't live that long. Why are you open to Ozempic again? Even if it can mess with your gallbladder. Because rapid weight loss, yo-yo dieting, losing a large amount of weight, all of that messes with your gallbladder regardless. And I'm the queen of yo-yo dieting. You guys know that. I want to lose a large chunk of weight. So it's like my gallbladder has had issues in the past already due to the yo-yo dieting and to the weight loss. So it's like, what's another thing? What a wild statement to make. And where was this attitude when she was actually on it and successfully losing weight? If I'm being supervised by a doctor and they're like, you know what, it's fine. I think your gallbladder will be fine. Then I'm gonna do it. When I first started Ozempic, which is something my doctor recommended to me, she actually had a few um weight loss medicines that i could use and i chose ozempic out of like the three she you know obviously she knows my health and my health history and i told her you know i was diagnosed with gallstones almost a decade ago from rapid weight loss i lost 89 pounds um i lost in six months rapid weight loss is considered one to two pounds a week so i got gallstones from my rapid weight loss you know, my gallbladder was just under attack constantly. It never got bad enough for me to get surgery. And I always found it so strange that it had to reach a certain stage before you got surgery because the pain was already just tearing me apart. Like I would rock back and forth. Like she was like, do you show any more signs of it? Like when's the last time you had an attack? And it made me realize, wow, I actually haven't had a gallstone attack. I've had maybe like one or two in the last three plus years. She was like, well, that means they could have gotten better. She was like, let's put you on Ozempic. And if you ever feel like you have any, you know, gallbladder problems, you need to tell me and you're going to have to get off of it. And I said, okay. And she was like, have you ever had pancreas problems? And I said, unfortunately, yes. She trusted that I would tell her if I had any issues. And I did tell her. And it was around the same time that they noticed from my CT scans that I have sludge in my gallbladder. So my doctor told me, okay, you need to stop taking those Ozempic. Um, can we just give it one more chance? Can we wait until I'm in pain one more time? I don't know why people are, you know, constantly just like trying to tell me that my doctor's wrong. As much as I wanted to continue Ozempic, it's just like, I know I need to just follow what the doctors are telling me to do at this point. My body is currently failing me without me even doing anything. I'm not gonna not lose weight just because of my gallbladder. Do you think the therapy you did for weight loss surgery helped you? Because as a viewer of eight years, I have noticed a huge positive change in you. I also noticed it as well. The therapy definitely helped. And it's almost as if like my whole weight loss surgery journey was just like meant to happen for that very reason. And getting diagnosed with PTSD and also BPD, it opened my eyes tremendously. And I'm able to like rationally be like, okay, so this is the reason you're this way. Now it's your choice to like find that rational side of you. The question is, what is the worst habit that you do when you're in love with someone? So not only do I have BPD, but I have massive massive anxious attachment issues like when i'm in love with someone they become my everything and i know it's because of the bpd i know it's because of the anxious attachment so it gets so bad it's to the point where it's like my emotions my feelings my thoughts the way my day goes etc etc is all based on the way that they are treating me one small change or tweak in tone or words can literally feel like the end of the world 
to me. I never understood why. I always thought I was just dramatic. That's what I was called, you know, my whole life to, in relationships. It's just like, you're dramatic. Why, why are you so irrational? Why do you act this way? Like you're just being crazy. Like, I wonder if YP ever said these things to Amber. She was the most independent of all of her exes. And this definitely seems like something that could have attributed to the breakup. Not only that, we saw this obsession even after the breakup. Amber would constantly message and call YP and talk about her in vlogs to the point where YP told her to leave her alone. Destiny and Becky have also talked about how clingy, needy, and controlling Amber was. Now that I know the reason, it's like, wow, I have BPD. That's why I'm doing this. So say someone I'm in a relationship with usually messages me every morning at 9 a.m. and says good morning to me. That's something I'm used to. That's something that I expect. So if it comes 9.30, I start to think they hate me. They want nothing to do with me. They're cheating on me. I'm not gonna lie. It would probably start happening around 9.03 a.m. So then what that would cause me to do is text them. Why haven't you talked to me? Is everything okay? Like multiple, multiple texts. Because not only is that my BPD being like triggered, but it's also my anxious attachment being triggered. What show did you audition for last year? So I am friends with someone from a thousand pound best friends. I mean, we know it's Megan because they publicly interact. We thought it would be a good idea for me to be on that show. So she talked to the producers and they're like, you know what, let's give her an interview. So I had an interview. Feline was my girlfriend at the time and she was 100% supportive. We knew that we were gonna have to actually move to a different state to be a part of that show. And we were both willing to do it. We were willing and ready. I did the interview, it actually went amazing, but I never heard back from them. And I'm not gonna lie to you, this happens a lot. <laughs> I have been interviewed for a few weight loss shows and it always goes really good. They like hype me up and they make me feel really good, but they never call me back. They never even tell me sorry. These shows don't turn her down. She turns them down. She didn't want to be on my 600 pound life because she didn't want to do the shower scene. She's turned down Nick and others for collabs because she was embarrassed of her size. And just recently she turned down that new Dr. Now show. She claimed it was because they told her she didn't weigh enough. But turns out she was actually telling the producer that she was losing weight on her own. But yeah, it was a thousand pound best friends. And I don't know, it just would have been, it would have been great. Like I, I really do feel that. Do you consider yourself a sexual person? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I would consider myself to actually be a very sexual person, especially like if we vibe in that way every day. Um, I'm a daily type of girly pop. So is wifey number one the same as wifey number two? Wifey number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are all the same person. So in case you're new here and wonder why Amber is so disliked, it's because of things like this. She doxed YP, then blamed it on her audience, and then she had to come up with this huge law that she had a new girlfriend and YP was no longer. Her audience questioned her about it, and they were constantly told that wifey, YP, Jade, Alex, Feline were all different people. When she gets desperate for content, all the laws come out. Do you use sex toys with yourself or with partners? Yes, I do. See, this is why we think she sends these to herself, because who the hell is asking her these types of questions? Tie me up, uh, put my panties in my mouth. <laughs> A large portion of 2019, if not the whole 2019, where I literally couldn't shower. It wouldn't even be frequently. Come do whatever you want to me because I'm tied up. So there's nothing I can do about it. What really happened during the weight loss surgery era? I came on my YouTube and I said, I can't get weight loss surgery until I don't bitch for a whole year. Then I had an appointment with my dietitian and she said, you're gonna come meet the surgeon because we need to talk to you about something. So long story short, hundreds and hundreds of people were emailing my surgeon, finding his Instagram and messaging him. They were contacting my surgeon's office through the phone, through messages. So how did people find out who my surgeon was? A reaction channel. How did that reaction channel find out who my surgeon was? Because I read maybe two sentences of an email that was sent to me by my surgeon's office. This reactor wanted to know so badly who my surgeon was that they faked wanting to get weight loss surgery just so they could get that email back to them to confirm who my weight loss surgeon was. And once they confirmed who my weight loss surgeon was, what did they do? They doxed him. 
Who is she talking about? I never saw a reaction channel doxing a famous surgeon on their channel, did you? If this is true, why isn't she calling this person out? She loves to name drop. In this video alone, she's discussed Yo Mama, Nikocado, Zachary Michael and Megan from 1000LB Best Friends. If she hates reaction channels so much, why not call him out? They said, this is Amber Lynn's surgeon. This is who he is. Well, my surgeon was Dr. Smith, um, the same surgeon who did Tammy Slayton surgery. He explained to me the type of messages and things that he was receiving. It was people saying how I binged and I lie. So not only was I fighting for myself to get weight loss surgery, but I was fighting against hundreds of people because of a careless reaction channel. Do you believe that hundreds of people were harassing this surgeon? Like she said, he's a very well-known surgeon who has performed on people way more well-known than Amber. I don't see how this would have affected her surgery in any way. So once the surgeon heard about all this and heard my side of the story, that is when things were changed. And he was like, you know what, a year is way too long. He explained to me that they've never been in this type of situation where like someone who was well known gets doxxed and now he's receiving all of these messages. And, and I feel like a lot of people might um, ask this. No, that's not the reason why I didn't end up getting weight loss surgery because I was still going through with it. Like I ultimately did not get weight loss surgery because I didn't feel ready. I didn't feel like I had the support that I needed because me and my ex, my now ex, we were just going through a lot at the time. It was super expensive, like $35,000. Like it was just like a lot of different things that were causing me to be like, this is not the right choice right now. What's the biggest reason you aren't getting weight loss surgery? Lack of stability. When you get weight loss surgery, they said you're gonna need someone. You're gonna need that one person like to really, really support you. And right now with this breakup, I don't want to put Feleen in that position at all. Though I did not know that Feleen and I were not gonna be together when I made the choice not to get weight loss surgery because at the time, it was because I knew I wasn't ready. I have horrible relationship with food and I knew that I wasn't changed. 12 therapy sessions did not change. 31 years of me turning to food during the hardest times of my life. So instead of the professionals telling me, mm, you're not ready, I just knew, I knew I wasn't ready. So why go through more heartbreak when I already knew that I wasn't ready? Like, it's like common sense. A lot of you were telling me, Amberlynn, you're not ready, and you were right. So now that you are right, let's leave the weight loss surgery arc behind us.